What up, what up, what up, though, guys? It's your girl, Jaja, and you are listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. Listen, it is a beautiful day. I know it's cold outside and y'all ain't get a chance to get the sun like they got it going on in Florida and all that good stuff. But guess what? It's still a beautiful day. It's still a beautiful day. And it is Thankful Thursdays, as I say, each and every week. Um, we have the activities of our limbs. We ain't in nobody's jail. And listen, when I tell you God is so good, he'll make your enemies your footstool. And I'm telling you, that is the truth. Listen, it's your girl, Jaja, and you are listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. We're talking all about 400 more years of slave. 400 more years. Listen, it's your girl, Jaja, and you are listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I'm talking all about 400 more years. Listen, it is a beautiful, beautiful day. It's the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, what up, though? What up, though, family? Listen, when I tell y'all I am super duper excited, super duper grateful, because listen, let me tell y'all something. God is good. And I have been in situations where I felt like God wasn't so good, okay? And I can be honest enough to say, I used to be looking at God like, like, you don't, I mean, like, I know I, I be sinning and everything, but like, we ain't, we ain't really like working together like I thought we would. And if you're tuning in, I'm talking all about 400 more years. Now, listen, one of the things that I know and you all know about our people uh, being enslaved as a community, being enslaved in our mind. But let me tell you something. One of the reasons why they were able to put a 400 year gap in between us and other ethnicities is because of one simple thing, that dollar dollar bill. And I'm going to tell you something. The people in Africa that got kidnapped as slaves and this, that, and the third, they didn't just entrap themselves. And see, this is the thing. If you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. This is when you got to be careful about getting involved in certain situations with certain people because you don't know what is attached to that. I'm sure people over in Africa probably saw ships coming on, and I'm sure they the, the villagers and, and the people were having their little lives and, and focus on their families and, and doing their thing. And I'm sure there were other people that looked like them that they saw coming in Africa, coming amongst their villages, you know, talking about Jesus and talking about the church and talking about, you know, and, it, and let me be very clear for all you saints and angst before you get on my page. I'm like, oh, she dogging out Jesus. No, I'm not talking about dogging out Jesus because I love me some Jesus. It's getting ready to be Easter weekend. He, he rose, he died. Uh, for me. OK, but you have to be careful of people who feed you things because they look like watch this. They look like they're one of you. There are going to be people in your life that are going to they're going to camouflage. They're going to they're going to clap hands with you. They're going to say all the stuff that you think you want to hear. But I'm going to tell you something about imposters, about people who look like they belong in certain areas in your comfort zone. At the end of the day, there's going to be an uncomfortable spirit that dwells about them. You're going to say, it's something about them. I don't know. It's something. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're tuning in, we're talking about 400 more years. If we're not careful, the money that they are allowing our people to have, the people in our community to have, is either going to catapult us for the next 10 years to put us in place for the next 400 years, or it's going to catapult you back 10 years. And it's going to put us back as a community 400 more years. And I know you're probably thinking, oh my God, don't nobody want to hear about the black culture and uh, stand up for your rights and all of this. But if we don't talk about it, it's going to happen and it's going to come down your street. See, it's easy for things not to affect us because they're not inadvertently at our doorstep. I don't fight for education because my son is accepted to a college. I fight for education because I know what knowledge can do. The Bible says people perish for lack of knowledge. So it's a reason why our communities aren't flourishing. You know why they're not flourishing is because we are putting more attention and more uh, efforts into stuff that cannot help us. 
This weekend, I had an opportunity to celebrate my sister's amazing uh, celebratory wedding. And when I tell you, it was absolutely beautiful. My, my sister was absolutely gorgeous. But you know what I also saw? I saw people who were petty, that were immature, who were looking at a situation and not helping it. They were, they were hurting a situation that's already devastating to the parties that's involved. See, we got to be careful that we don't help our own people with our own demise. And what I mean by that, you got to be careful that you're not a part of the problem acting like you part of the solution and you're not. See, there are some people that have misled our people, just like those people in Africa. Those people in Ghana, those people in North Africa, South Africa, those people in all of these different uh, areas that were hoodwinked and bamboozled by people who look like you. Let me tell you something. I could easily go start an OnlyFans page. I could easily go do all the stuff that I, I really, really want to do. OK, because at the end of the day. When people choose to motivate you or speak positive in your life or or open up doors for you that you didn't ask for or even the doors that you did ask for as a family, we have to learn to work together because if we don't, we'll be behind another 400 years. Let me tell you all something about this unemployment, this unemployment thing that's popping. Let me tell you something. The Chaldeans, the, the Arabics, they, they already knew about this. They already knew about the wave. We, the black people, we are always the ones late to the party. And if you're not careful, y'all going to give all y'all money to the Balenciaga boys because they already got it. To the Birkin bag people, they already got it. Gucci is good. They already got it. If you don't take that money, and I'm going to tell you something. Don't get me wrong. I want you to have fun. I want you to live. I want you to go and I want you to live your life. But this is what you got to know. Okay? If you out here traveling and you hitting Miami and you hitting LA and you hitting New York and y'all going to Puerto Rico, but your kids ain't going with you. Your kids want to travel. They want to see the world. They deserve to see it. They tired of being cooked up with you too. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Listen, make sure you follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know Jaja because you do. I'm talking all about 400 more years of food. Today is April 1st, 2021. And as we knew growing up, it was April Fool's Day. And during April Fool's Day, throughout the day, we would play pranks on one another. And at the end of the prank, you know what we would say, April Fool's. But I'm going to tell you something. The life we living right now ain't a joke. It ain't a joke and it ain't a game. And at the end of the day, what's going to happen six months from now, what you do six months from now will set your future up 10 years from now. 10 years from now, my son will be 28 years old. 10 years from now, 10 years from now, I'll be blah, 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 blah years old. 10 years from now, 10 years ago, my son was 10, okay? Getting out of elementary school, going to middle school. So time is waiting for nobody. So if you think, oh, I got time, oh, I could chillax, or this, that, and the third, you this blessing that we have right now won't come again. And at the end of the day, what you take, what you do with this money, what you do with the relationships that you have, you can take this money and you can make it work for your good and bring some stability to you and your family's life, or you can blow it and be back broke before this year's out. I guarantee you, I, Jaja, guarantee you that anybody who thinks that they're going to take th this money and these funds and go give them to the jewelry store people, give it to the gym shoe people. And don't get me wrong, go get you some nice things. You, We all deserve nice things. However, nice things do not equate to nice living. I like buying nice things too, but this is the same wig I didn't have for the last three years. I wash it. I blow dry it, condition it real good, and I just get a new frontal. 
because I'm on a mission. I don't have time to go get my hair done every other week or every two weeks or every other day. And don't get me wrong. If that's your thing, that's your due, due diligence, do you. But at the end of the day, you got to know what your goal is and what your mission is. And you got to live through it because God only blesses self-discipline. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yah said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about 400 more years, 400 more years of food. We cannot afford to be 400, 400 more years of food. And I'm going to tell you why we can't afford it. Our kids are watching us. This generation right here. Now, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't have wanted to be a part of a pandemic, but to know that my parent is getting all this money. And it's my senior year or, you know, it's a, a very, very uh, spectacular uh, moment in my life. I'm getting married or or I'm having a baby uh, right now. Financially, it's a blessing. Now, I'm going to tell you something, something that I had to learn as a mother that. As a, as a woman and as a mother, I had to learn that there were going to be times where. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to provide for me and my son. I didn't know where my next blessing was going to come from. I didn't know how I was going to get this boy to school. But what I do know is I put in the work of 17 years as a mother when I didn't feel like it. Come on, mamas and daddies. Sometimes we don't feel like being a parent. I'd be looking at him like, parent yourself. <laughs> Sometimes we feel like that. I need my mama. Where's my mama at? But at the end of the day, we don't want to raise another generation of fools. Let me tell y'all something. That little 13 year old boy and the little 15 year old boy that robbed the Uber driver or Lyft driver. And now y'all got a body. You know why? Because somebody was not constantly in their ear. Listen, there were days my son said he hated me. So y'all not ready for the real. Y'all not ready for the... There were days my son said he hated me. But I hate you. You get on my nerves. You always trying to da 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 and da 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 But I was diligent. Because, yeah, I said I hated my mama too. I remember yelling, saying I hate Kelly. Oh, my God, I hate you. You know, y'all know. Y'all been y'all 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 remember when y'all was kids and you told your mama I hate you. I don't never want to leave here no more. I wish I had some other parent and da, da 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 da. I had to go through it. Oh, and it hurt. Oh, it hurt y'all. It didn't feel good. Because when you're a single parent doing the best you can with what you have until you can get more, oh, it don't feel good. But I'm gonna tell you something. In those moments that I had on the other day. At the end of the day, that is the result of good parenting. Yeah, I'm going to be told, I hate you, you get on my nerves. But guess what? My son won't have a hashtag on his back in an Ionia Correctional Facility. That's for sure. One thing's for sure, two things for certain. He won't be upstate in the Upper Peninsula asking me, can I send him a JPEG? Or, or uh, can I send put some money on his books? See, you all, you all think this is a game. Them babies that just got that body, they're going to be gone for a very, very large portion of their life. And see, I don't want my son to have to go to prison to show that he a man. See, unfortunately, we got the game messed up because we got 400 years of being foolish. 400. This is how other ethnicities have stepped ahead of the game ahead of us because we were misled. We get distracted by things that ain't got nothing to do with helping our communities without helping our families. And I'm going to tell you something. While we all out here chasing the bag, it's beautiful to chase the bag, but it's a beautiful thing when the family can chase the bag and build a bag together. When you see a family building business and doing business together and they making the money and they counting out the money. Listen, let me tell you something. Me and my son and my sister, we counted out $20,000 yesterday. Ah, 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 ah. Not because, and I'm not telling you this to show off. I'm telling you this because I wanted my sons and my sisters to count that type of money. I want them to be around that type of money. Not so that they can show off to the, to the friends around them that don't have nothing. Because, see, that's how we end up continuing to be 400 years a slave. Ooh, look at me. Look what I got. I got the new mug. Now it creates envy. It creates jealousy. Now I want your mug. 
You made the mug look so good. I don't even need a mug. But because you made it look so good, I want your mug. And we got to be careful that we're when we're showing off. And I'm going to tell you something. I didn't make that video and 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 and, and publicize that to 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 stop anybody to sugar honey iced tea on anybody. Let me tell you something. I dropped out of college. Went back, dropped out again. Went back, dropped out again. And now I'm finally about to graduate. At the end of the day, college doesn't make you or break you, but it does help you develop. And there are some students and some individuals that need to go to college. And then there are some people who need to go to college and they find out that ain't what they need. But at the end of the day, it allows them the opportunity to figure it out. Because I'm going to tell you something, there are 40, 50, 60, 70 year olds right now that did not figure out what the hell they wanted to do with their life. And they're mad at 21 year olds and 17 year olds and 30 year olds who are millionaires now because they, they, they believe they have faith in their vision and their dream. And they didn't take no for an answer. There are going to be people in your life that are not going to be able to believe what you can accomplish. It ain't for them to believe it. If it was up to the people, I would just have been a baby mama on welfare, just living my little life. If it was up to other people's expectations. See, I have learned to be delivered from OPO. I tell y'all this every week. What is OPO? Other people's opinion. Because at the end of the day, there are millions of people around this world that are living because of other people's opinions. I wanted my son to go to Florida. A&M University. That was my choice. I wanted to come and visit my son and I wanted to come down there with my bikini on and I wanted to be at the beach and I wanted to go see my cousin who plays for the Miami Dolphins and I wanted to just live my little life, okay? But I also had to respect that my son has a life too. And as a mother and as parents, God gives us our children as a gift. We don't own our kids. My sister in love, Dr. Angela Scott, I never forget. We were sitting, um, we weren't even sitting, we were standing up and uh, we were just talking about our children. And um, she said, God loans you these children. They pass through your life. They don't stay there. You don't own your kid. And I had to think about, okay, I know what I want for my child, but what does my child want for him? And he didn't want to go to FAMU. He wanted to go to where he wanted to go. And see, what you all don't understand is as a, as a mother, you want the best for your child. And even with you want the best for your child, you're going to have to go off on your child sometimes. Okay? 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 I had to have a Kirk Franklin spirit on some mornings. There were some mornings driving a cast tech where I had to get him together. How am I up before you? And you got to go to this school. I already got my diploma. See, people have a tendency to, to frown up and turn their nose up at somebody's success, but you don't know what they had to go through to get there. There were days that I had to put $2 on pump five to get that boy down the cast tech off Grand River. When you, none of y'all coming off in a rat. So at the end of the day, every success and every accomplishment that him and I are able to obtain it came with a price. It came with a sacrifice. It came with a struggle. That's why when, when I went to celebrate my sister's, you know, her wedding this week, this past weekend, I found it so disheartening. That here it is. We're supposed to be celebrating a family event. And y'all looking. And this is why you got to be careful about being misled because everybody's not going to give you godly wisdom and everybody's not getting their wisdom from God. See, my connection comes from the source, baby. Okay. It ain't no hearsay. I ain't getting my relationship with Christ through no third party. I ain't asking nobody else to pray for me. Uh-uh. I'm praying for myself. I'm going for the gusto for myself because at the end of the day, when I had to sit at the FIA office like precious, when my mama told me at 17 years old, graduating from McKenzie High School off Chicago and Wyoming, since you pregnant now, okay, let's go on down here to the welfare office so you can get you and Tayshawn a Medicaid card, so you can go ahead and get this bridge card. Oh, I was embarrassed. 
I was in there. Oh, well, I don't belong in here. I just graduated the top of my class. You got me up in here trying to get some government assistance. Go what is this? And my mama, I promise you, she was like, you better go down to the welfare office. But I knew when I had my son, July 1st, 2003 at 9.40 a.m., I told him, I said, I got you. You ain't gonna ever have to worry if I got you. See, this is one of the reasons why we will always be behind because some of you ain't solid. You blow wherever the wind take you. You over here, you over there. You don't got a stance with nobody. And see, I'm always very conscientious of people who say things like, I got your back. You know, I'm your girl. You know, you ain't got to even. No, 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 no. I pay attention to what people do, not what they say, because there are a lot of people who say a lot of things, but they don't have nothing substantial behind what it is that they are really building. I've had people call me with projects. Girl, I want you to do this. I want you to host this. I want you to do, 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 do. Follow up with them. They ain't even follow through on their own thing. But you but you want me to be attached to it. See, you got to be careful not to be misled by people who you think have wisdom and they don't have nothing. See, as I was sitting at my sister's wedding, I could feel the people talking about me. I could feel the people talking about my sister, my, my baby sister. But see, you got to be mindful of things that people think that they know. And you got to be mindful of people who you allow into your space for problems. I don't get counseling from everybody. And I don't give counseling to everybody. My couples that I marry, I counsel them because at the end of the day, and I tell them all the time, I said, if you all are going to be single or, or be married, you need married friends. You need friends that have been married. You need friends that have been divorced. And you need friends that are married now. You need friends that have been married in double digits. You need newlywed couples like you. And you need couples that have been in the trenches between five and five to seven years. I encourage my couples because if you get your wisdom from somebody that's single, you'll end up back single. But if you get your sound wisdom from people who've already been in it, who've already done it, you won't fail. See, I feel bad. For people who get their wisdom from people that have no idea what the hell they talk about. I find it uh, uh, hilarious when families choose to seek outside wisdom than the people that you're connected to. I find it disheartening when family members can support other people that they're not related to, but can't support what you're building and they know what you're building. Talking about 400 more years of food. If you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about 400 more years of food. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know Jaja because you do. Don't be a hater. And that's another thing. 400 years, they have made us hate each other. Let me tell you something. Anybody that chose to be my enemy, that's your fault. I didn't make you my enemy. I didn't tell you, hey, betray me. Hey, backstab me. Hey, be double-faced and unstable in all your ways. Hey, listen, shortchange me. Hey, steal from me. I ain't tell you to do that. You did that. So now because you chose to be my enemy, now I got to put you in the enemy's place. You don't get the same luxury that you would if it was family and friends. And see, some of you have put people in positions that they don't belong in. And, I, and let me tell you something. A lot of my blessings didn't start coming until I detached myself from certain people or watch this. Certain people detached themselves from me. There were some people that I wanted to stay connected to that God didn't want me to stay connected to. Because they didn't mean me no good. There are some things about people that you're related to. There are some things about people you're friends with, you work with, you go to church with. Let me tell you something. God knows the people more than you do. Okay? There are some people I thought I really knew. Family that I thought I really knew. Friends that I thought I really knew. Church members that I thought I really knew. People that were in leadership that I thought I really knew only for them to be just as devilish as the devil himself. Because, see, the Bible says you don't fight against flesh and blood, but you're fighting against the darkness and the principalities of this world. Let me tell you something. 
The person that's envious and jealous of you or suffers from ego, suffers from pride, suffers from unforgiveness. Those are character issues of an individual. They have nothing to do with you. Those are reflections of them. People that don't want to forgive you for things. That's on them. Don't you get stuck trying to beg nobody no more. Let me tell you something. I ain't going to keep apologizing for something I already apologized for. And I ain't going to keep begging to be in relationships with people that I don't even need to be in relationships with. See, at the end of the day, one of the things that uh, challenges and, and hurts taught me is that although you've done this to me, because I'm on a mission and God gave me this mission to stop 400 more years of this foolishness, I'm going to charge it to the game. I'm not going to I'm not going to treat you the way I could because I could take this Joy Row seven mile style all day. OK, <laughs> at the end of the day, we all know, you know, you can take care of certain situations the, the way you know how. Right. You, you feel me? You, you, you feel me? You picking up what I'm putting down? We could handle the situation if we got to handle it. But see, this is where maturity comes in. At. And this is what I tell you guys each and every week. Maturity doesn't come from people that's 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. You would think it would, but it don't. There are a lot of older women and men out here that are foolish. They are ignorant and they are just dumb. And I feel bad for them because I just I'm like, you was here on earth before we were. And why is it that you still making dumb decisions? But I'm going to tell you something. Everybody that has the same 24 hours as you, the same 365 days as you, the same uh, 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 seven days a week as you, they ain't going to always use the time to make themselves better. There are some people who wake up looking for mess, looking for drama. They feed off of generational curses. They love seeing a family in, in chaos and drama. And I'm going to tell you something. Anybody that's speaking negative about you or your family and you know you didn't do it right by people, they only causing a curse and karma on themselves. People who entertained chaos and, 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 and having uh, issues amongst me and my sisters, anybody that entertained the folly between me and my family, all you did was bring a curse amongst your own family. Oh, it may not happen right now. You see, that's the thing about karma that I love. It always shows up when you least expect it. So if you putting your name on me and, 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 and my sisters and, and what we got going on, you might want to be careful because it's going to end up happening to you and your family. That's how we ended up 400 years a slave. You know why? Because we were so quick. We were so quick to dog somebody else's situation out when we got a whole situation over here. See, it's easy to hide your stuff and magnify somebody else's. Because see, that's what that's what they would do to us while we were slaves. They would embarrass one. They would bring a Negro out, beat them. They, they would put fear in the other Negro so that they could turn on one another. Last time I checked, we ain't slaves no more. So why are we operating like we still are? Why, why are we operating like there's a fiddler somewhere? Why are we operating like Massa is going to whoop us if we don't work together? See, the thing about unity is that you got to be okay with you. See, if you got low self-esteem and you don't know who you are and you don't haven't discovered your passions or your gifts, you're going to have an issue with anybody else who does. Being jealous or envious doesn't make you a bad person. I've been jealous. I've been envious. I wanted my success to come quick, fast and in a hurry. I was ready, y'all. I've been ready. It wasn't that I didn't have the look, the time or anything. I just didn't have the money. It was the money I was lacking. And see, now. At the end of the day, before the pandemic came, God was looking out for me financially. So he's only going to increase it. And it ain't it ain't me throwing God's name out there because a lot of y'all doing it. I see. I see it. I see uh, everybody's so woke and everybody's using God and, you know, everybody's so enlightened. And it's entertaining. I think it's cute. But to really know God is to put down your phone. Spend some time, some quiet time. Ain't no drink, ain't no weed, ain't no lean, ain't no TV, ain't no radio, ain't no podcast. 
Ain't no YouTube. It was just me and God. It was just me and God. I would walk and it's just me. We just, it's just us. Because at the end of the day, you can't get to where you're going because you're going to be distracted. And distractions kept coming. Penis. That's one of my main distractions. I love how God made the man. The man is amazing thing. He is, uh, oh, Jesus. Every time I think about it. And I knew, okay, if I talk to this person, I'm going to be distracted because I want to be with him. I want to be under him. I want to see what they doing. But how can I do what God told me to do if I'm under him? See, some of y'all underneath a man, you're underneath a woman, you chasing behind stuff that ain't got nothing to do with what God called you to do. And if you don't take care of that stuff now, you are going to look up. I just was talking to my auntie this morning. And uh, she said, Jaja, I'm so proud of you. I'm proud that you are fighting for your dreams. I'm proud of you that you are not taking no for an answer because you don't want to get my age. Listen to this. She said, you don't want to get my age and try to figure out what happened to your life. There are some people who got the job at Chrysler and it was only supposed to be a temporary job. And now you in there, you've been in there for 20, 30 years. Yeah, you got the money, but your feet hurt. Your back hurt. Your hands hurt. You can't even play with your kids and your grandkids like you want to because you're tired all the time. You can't even you can't even be where you need to be or involved in things because now you are slave to this job. Let me tell you something. There were jobs that I quit with a quickness because I ain't let nothing stop me from spending time with my child. He my only one. There were days that companies wanted me to stay. There were days that I would leave Wayne County. And I love my Wayne County uh, co-workers because y'all held me down when I had to skip, skip town and go up to Detroit Academy of Arts and Science on Jefferson to go get my baby. Then drive over to University Prep, University Prep to go pick up my little sister only to come back down to Wayne County to go back to work. It's a sacrifice. It's the discipline. God got to see you got some skin in the game. See, some of y'all want y'all print. God, bless my finances. God, I need my stimulus. I want my unemployment check. God, please, 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 please. I've been there. I was pleading God too. I was, let me tell y'all, I was pleading with God. God, please fix my situation. God, please help me and my family. See, people don't know the prayers that I put out there. Just like, I don't know the prayers that you've put out there. That's why you got to be mindful of people who pray for you or pray on you. P-R-A-Y or P-R-E-Y. Because see, everybody ain't praying for you. Okay. There are some people that are praying on you. They praying on your downfall. They praying on your weakness. They praying on your stupidity. They praying that, that, that you don't make it. They Listen, there are some people that have been assigned to your demise, but don't let them. Listen, I can't take the I can't take my foot off the gas because if I take my foot off the gas, then I'm going to start looking around and stuff. My focus right now is the only thing that's in front of me. I can't I can't do nothing with what happened. Yesterday is a cancel check. OK, today is cash money and tomorrow is a promissory note, as my Bishop J. Drew Sheard would say. So only thing that I can focus on is today and what I have planned for the future. Because at the end of the day, people will pull you back to the past. They'll pull you back. They'll have you thinking, did I do something wrong? You'll be talking about, did I do that? Like Steve Urkel. There are people that are assigned to you to make you forget your promise. When I was going through my divorce, I felt like a failure. Here it is. I got married in front of all these dignitaries. The bishop that married us. We didn't told what we do. We love each other. And only for us to turn around and get divorced. I felt broken. I felt like a failure. I felt like, how is it that I thought this was a God thing? But I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes it don't be a God thing. It be an our thing. See, when you talk about your will being not my will, but your will, that's a very, 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 very strong prayer. See, some of us don't remember what we prayed for. I remember saying, not your will, God, but my will. God, take my life. God, be in control. Oh, but when he got in control, baby, that. Listen, I'm about to call God a nigga. 
God, God, God took control of that thing. He took control of that thing. And when I tell you, God broke me down to build me back up. That which y'all saw last year, I literally almost died a year ago. I was there. I don't know where y'all was at, but I was there. People talked about me, made fun of me. Literally, 102.5 temperature. Sweating, got cold, sweating, can't breathe, can't nothing. Only for the same year, only for the same day, a year later, my son getting, he get, he get a, a full scholarship to college. Only for one year ago, I'm 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 signing my lease to my new office. Only a year, listen, a year ago, I was about to die. Only for a year later, he's blessing my life abundantly beyond I could think or ask. My son didn't take no SAT, ACT. He ain't no uh, honor roll student. Listen, we was praying that he graduate. Okay? If y'all want to be real, if we want to keep it real 100, yeah, I said it before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. We're talking about 400 years of food. In order for our people to get ahead in life, and I'm not just talking about one person, one family, because when one person can win and one family can win, a community can win. Y'all got to stop being so damn shady. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Y'all are the shadiest people in the city of Detroit I've ever met. You hate on things that you shouldn't be hating on. You hurt people that you shouldn't be hurting but helping. And then when the people hurt you, you confuse because they never had your best interest at heart in the beginning. People watch you. That's why I'm always conscientious of people who want to link up and do projects with me. Who sent you? Because I'm not letting not a single soul take me off my square. I'm okay when, when certain family members didn't want to talk to me no more. Cool. That frees up my mind and my time to focus on what I got to focus on. When people don't want to talk to you no more, don't trip. Let them fools go. <laughs> that man don't want you no more. Girl, bye. You better go put your spanks on. Go get you some clean panties. Go take your shower. Go put your lipstick on and go on. on. You'll find somebody else. Let me tell you something. You'll find your husband in CVS. You hear me? You hear me what I say? You'll find your wife at the car wash. See, you don't know what God will do. God will put you in a position where he will bless you right in front of your enemies. Let me tell you something. Every person that has some negative shit to say about Zsa Chantel Hubbard, they're going to have to watch these blessings. I know you said some crazy stuff about me. It's okay. You got to eat that. Not me. You got to be charged with that by God. Not me. Only thing that I'm charged with is how I treat you. My only charge is how I respond to you. I ain't responsible to how you treat me. I ain't going to be charged with that. I'm going to be charged with how I respond. And see, I like peace in my life. And I and I make sure that anybody I'm affiliated with know, is there a problem? Do we need to discuss something? Do we need to talk? Anytime, anyplace, anywhere. Because see, some people think you won't act the fool on them. See, as a mama, a mother, okay? As a mother, as a father, you know, wherever you clown, it goes down. And my son used to call himself trying to clown on me. Oh, you going to try to act a fool on me out in public? Oh, okay. Well, now I'm about to clown and act a fool on you in public. So at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you something. I spoke words of positivity over my child because I saw my mother have to send both of her sons, not send, have to see both of her sons taken. Our black men are in prison. They are leaders of families. They are fathers. They are mothers in a hospital on drugs, strung out. And instead of us, instead of us talking about them, we, we need to help them. And in order for our people, who us, our people, to get ahead, we're going to have to back those leaders. Some of you are leaders. And then some of you are leaders of leaders. So it's okay to support somebody else. 
There are people who have been co in competition with me. We ain't in the same industry. <laughs> it's crazy. We we don't we're not going after the same thing. But because they have been hoodwinked and bamboozled by their words, and because they look like they popping, people gravitate to them. But see, you got to be careful who you gravitate to. Some people will, you will gravitate to will send you to hell. There are some relationships that I thought that I needed to be connected to because you we think in our advancement, I got to be amongst the movers and shakers. I'm going to tell you something. God will put people in your life that will catapult you to a whole nother dimension. I have had support from people who literally sit on boards that run this state. <laughs> I am so grateful because God has allowed me to be connected with people and families that are running this city. God has allowed me to be connected to people who make decisions over the people who we thought made the decisions. So before you, before you decide to downplay what you're doing or cash yourself out. You don't know who God will send you to help you along the way. The journey of getting my son to where he is right now, because we're building generational blessings, but people imparted wisdom along the way. When there were times where I could not make it, I didn't think I was going to make it. There were times I wanted to kill myself, my son, and just be done with life. I never forget that young lady who killed her kids and put them in a deep freezer. And I and I and I remember so many people dogging this woman out. Oh, she crazy. She this, she that, she this, she that. Not knowing how challenging it is just to be a a woman, an individual, let alone be a parent. And to some people, well, she maybe she shouldn't have been a mama then. That's the wrong attitude that we, that's the problem. This is why we're going to continue to be 400 years of slaves because of how we are dealing with one another. I'm very conscientious of how I deal with my young people because they're impressionable. This is the next generation. This is the next group of people that's going out there. I'm always very mindful of the wisdom that I impart into their lives because at the end of the day, these are the people that are going to be out here. If you're not careful, you're going to raise another foolish person. I'm not raising my son to abuse a woman. Because at the end of the day, he's going to be with somebody's daughter. I didn't raise my son to be materialistic. Because there are a lot of people who are getting ready to get some money. And because they don't know themselves, guess what? The first place they're going to take their money to is to somebody else. And at the end of the day, we're talking about 400 more years of food. Listen, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, Zsa Zsa. Follow me on Facebook. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Listen, you already know I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. At the end of the day, y'all already know. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Listen, make sure that you tune in tomorrow for my TV show. You already know Uncommon Conversations with Zsa Zsa. Listen, we are on WHPR TV 33, and that is channel 90 for Comcast and channel 15.2 for those of you who don't got cable like I do, okay? Because that's just an unnecessary bill, and I'm trying to stay wealthy. And in order for me to stay wealthy, you got to eliminate things that you don't need, okay? So with that being said, make sure that you tune in tomorrow. Make sure that you check out the new show with Derek Davis, uh, Coach Derek Davis, to be exact. And listen, if you want to be on the TV show, if you want to be on the podcast as one of my featured guests, I would love to have you. Listen, slide in my DMs. Don't be fake. Y'all already know. Listen, I ain't going to be fake with you as long as you ain't fake with me. And even then, I'm still going to be myself. Follow me. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. But I'm talking all about 400 more years of food. 400 more years of food. Because listen, so many of us get tripped up on words. God did not want me to have premature blessings before I was ready for them. Some of us want things that God knows we're not ready for. There were some things that God held up. He didn't say I couldn't have them. He held them up, right? 
because I wasn't tough enough. The life that I'm trying to live, I have to have armadillo skin. Because as a woman in business, sometimes you're not taken seriously. And unfortunately, sometimes there are situations that cause people to question your character or, or what it is that you're trying to do. You know, there are people who say they want to do certain things and I watch them just to see, are you who you say you are? But at the end of the day, when it comes down to 400 years being a fool, in order for us to help the next generation, we're going to have to put aside that ego, put aside that pride and get behind the people that are making things happen. You sitting up here, uh, look at them trying to do this. That's the problem. That's why our people will never get past where we need to go. This is why people will come to Detroit and leave Detroit. This is why our babies will be birthed in Detroit and want to move somewhere else. Because we have not created a foundation that's welcoming to black success. Yeah, it's cool when we see other people winning. But when it comes to somebody that we know for sure is winning, we got to question it. And, and, and now we looking at it. And, and, and then all of a sudden, they've been showing you all along. They've been showing you all along and see in order for us to get past 400 years being a slave, we got to know we ain't slaves no more. I ain't got to envy your success. I ain't got to envy your bag. And, and this is another thing that I don't like. We know people that didn't have no money is getting money now. Let these people have their money. When nobody tripping on you when, when you were scheming and scamming because some of y'all ain't get y'all well for y'all success because y'all climbed, y'all climbed the corporate ladder or, you know, you actually put in the work. Because if we really shine the light on how you really got what you got, it wouldn't be the way you trying to make it out to be. Y'all ain't self-made. You didn't pull yourself up by no bootstraps. And see, some of you have, this is the thing, social media and the internet has allowed us to be so foolish that we really sometimes believe our own lies. You didn't go out here and really get the bag. You a scammer. You didn't really go out here and get the bag. You was stealing. You ain't really go get the bag. You was flipping. So at the end of the day, before you start hating on these, these people who are now getting their new money, let these people enjoy their new money. That's black people ain't had nothing. So because we ain't had nothing, of course they want to show off. They probably ain't had a chance to go get no crab legs. My mother raised us and took us out to dinner. We went out to dinner. We never, we didn't live a life where all we grew up on was, 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 was poor stuff. Even though my mom made sacrifices to take us out to dinner and take us out to lunch and expose us to different things. There are a lot of families and a lot of people that didn't get exposed to it. So before you decide that you want to hate on another black person, okay, for getting whatever little bit of money that they're getting right now, why don't you help them? Give them some wisdom, a nugget, put, put a bug in their ear. And you got to be welcoming and receptive to the information. That's another thing, black people. We got to stop acting like we know everything. You don't know everything. There were things that I did not know that I thought I knew. And it took somebody else telling me. And see, one of the things that I've learned is before I'm before I'm anybody's fool. I'm I ain't going to even be my own fool because I've been foolish. OK, we all have. We all have been in situations where people have made us a fool or we have been fools ourselves. And at the end of the day, you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all. I said it before I take it back. I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about 400 more years of food. I don't want to be no fool. Okay? I don't want to be a part of the statistic and the stereotypes of, I told you. Let me tell you something. These white folks, they sitting around saying, look at the niggas. They about to give us all our money back. Yeah. Yeah, we sent the money out to give to the people. Yeah, they killing each other. Look, we don't even have to do it. Look, look at them. Look at, yeah, just took out a whole family over there. Yup. Oh, they're buying lean like crazy. They're all going to be drug addicts in the next five to 10 years. Everybody's going to need new hearts, new pancreas, new livers. Oh, you know what? As a matter of fact, spend all your money at the strip club. Oh, and by the way, take all your money to all of the liquor stores and give your money away to all of the, all of the liquor stores. Nobody's smart enough to say, hey, 
let's put our money together and go buy a building so we can have a liquor store. Hey, nobody's saying let's put our money together and let's go get a gas station. Hey, you know what? Let's put our money together and open up this grocery store. You know why? Because don't nobody want to do the work. We love the success, but we don't want to do the work. The success comes with the work. The work comes with the success. If you don't want to work, then you don't want the success. There were things that I knew I was just great at, right? And I just knew I was just going to, I'm good at this. They should know this by now. But it wasn't until I started doing the work that they respected my grind. It wasn't until they saw me putting in the work and making the manifestation happen. And that's when they had to put the respect on my name. My son graduating, going off to college. Oh, I got some, I got some respect now from some people that I didn't have respect for or from. But now that they know, dang, she got a son that's about to go to college. Dang. So when I was seeing her do this and seeing her do that, she had a kid this whole, yes, I did. Hosting to make sure that we have food on the table. Speaking at these engagements, not because I just want to tell y'all what to do. I, I got a foundation that I'm building. And some of y'all, you guys are too callous with your lives, with your future, with your business, with your goals, with your dreams, with your kids, with your spouse. You're too callous. you too, you too loopy. Let me tell you something. When I get married again, I don't want all you women up in my man's face. You better back up. That's mine. And he gonna know. Uh-uh. She was winking at me, baby. She ain't your friend. Get, uh -uh. Get her out the crew. That's the type of man I want to be with. The type of man I want to be with. And we're talking about 400 years of slave. Because I'm going to tell you something. How they messed us up. How they messed black people up. They hid it in the finances. And they broke apart our families. This is how they got ahead. They put it in a book and they broke us up. They broke our families up and they and they wouldn't allow. They they got us distracted by all of the. the uh. Listen, let me tell you something. At the end of the day, I pay attention to every area in my life, all the way down to what I'm putting in my body. What my son is eating, what he listening to. Listen, I love the hip hop music. We be turned up. I listen to his music. He listen to mine. But if I hear some stuff that don't that does not marinate with me, and I know that it could potentially affect him, he ain't listening to that. I love all my Detroit rappers. Okay, we listen to all of them. We be up in here turned up. Okay, but the minute that I hear something that's contradictory to what I'm teaching, and you out here chanting it, okay, because words have power. That's why you got to watch what your kids is, 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 is regurgitating in terms of, uh, listen, don't get me wrong. If I had a daughter, she'd be listening to WAP, WAP, WAP too, okay? But she'll also know what it is, what it do, the power behind it. And see, sometimes one of the reasons why our communities have failed, our families have failed, and our finances have failed is because we hold on to this. We hold on to wisdom. We hold on to resources. And I get it. Because unfortunately, when you go to try to help somebody, people always mess up the bag. Because A, they don't want to listen. They think they know everything. It's okay to listen to somebody else. I talk for a living. But I also listen just as much as I talk. As In fact, I listen twice as much as I talk. Because God gave us two ears and one mouth. So clearly he want us to listen just as much as we talk. I had to learn my son. Our relationship didn't just get strong overnight. We didn't just become, we don't just have a handshake. And when we see each other and we embrace each other with love, that took time. That took me cussing him out, him going off on me. Because cause he had an opinion as a child. Let me tell you something. One of the best things that my mother ever could have done was promote my independence. Promote my first independent right to have an opinion. Now, my mama didn't too much like it when it was against her. But that's the part of the maturity and growth because sometimes it comes out of the mouth of babes. Sometimes your, your sign that you're looking for comes from somebody that you know that's just a baby. And you over, you're overlooking what God is trying to show you because you're thinking it's going to come out this magical moment. There were things that my son would reiter reiterate that he didn't even know I was working on or that I was praying. 
There were times that I would sit at my table and I would be crying because I didn't know how we were going to make it. And my son would come in and he would say, Ma, we're going to be all right. Ma, you need, you need my, uh, you need my, uh, my allowance money. Here, I got $5, mom, for gas. In my mind, I don't have a choice to make sure that my son is good. He don't get to get kicked out at 18. And for you parents out here to think like that, you are foolish and dumb. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Them Jewish families, they don't kick their kid out at 18. Them Chinese kids, they don't kick their kid out at 18. Hell, the Africans don't even kick their kid out at 18. But here we are. You got to go. <laughs> what? Let me tell you what they do. Oh, you ain't going to college? Get up in this beauty supply store. You're going to be doing the register until you figure out what you're going to do. Oh, oh, you don't know what you want to do with your life? Okay, well, get in here in this nail uh, this nail company at the nail shop, and you go on ahead and you do the pedicures until you figure out what you want to do with your life. Oh, okay. Oh, you don't know what you want to do? You don't know if you want to go to work or go to school or get a train? Okay. Well, guess what? Go and sit up here at this gas station uh, and, and, and cover the gas station counter and fill in all of these, uh, all this product right here because we're missing some chips on this app. Oh, you know what? Matter of fact, come on up here to the auto shop. I'm going to show you how to put some tires on. They don't kick their kids out. They don't leave their kids hanging, nor do they invest in their kids' outer appearance. They invest in piano lessons, dance lessons. They're investing in, in, in school assignments, camps, programs. You sitting up here, you done bought your kid every video game, every gym shoe, every, he know every TikTok song. But if you ask him to write a letter or if you ask him to fill out an envelope, he don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. This is why we can no longer be 400 years of food. Because at the end of the day, there is billions of dollars that's floating around right now in the city of Detroit. I was just sitting with a billionaire last night, literally last night. And he was telling me about a company that he's working with. There, there's money happening. There, there are things that are happening. And if you're not careful, the, what you do in these next six months will catapult you and your family and sustain you and your family for the next 10 years to come. Or you can be an idiot and you can be a fool and you can continue the, the years of oppression and economic disparity that is amongst our communities. Go buy you a house. You've been renting long enough. You done made them money on top of money on top of money. Go fix your credit. Stop putting stuff in other people's names. I know I've been there. Granddad, can you get this for me? Hey, cuz, can you get this rental car for me? Hey, can you put this, this gas in your name? Been there. I've been there. I've been there and I've done it. So at the end of the day, my job, my, my goal as a mature black woman from the city of Detroit is to help other young black men and women not to make the same mistakes as me, not to entertain their mistakes. That's why we keep messing ourselves up. We over here like, dog, for real? You did that, dog? That's crazy. No, we supposed to be like, you an idiot. Why did you do that? You don't need to be doing that. This is what you need to be doing and don't do it again. But no, we don't want to check nobody. I don't want to get in it. That ain't none of my business. You already in the business and you already giving bad advice anyway. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Listen, I love y'all. Make sure that you are not a fool on April Fool's Day. Listen, I want to make sure that we get out here and support our Detroit Tigers. Today is opening day. What up, though, y'all? Shout out to all of my family out here in 313. Listen, follow me on Facebook. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know Jaja because you do. And listen, when I tell you I'm super duper excited because uh, Friday is um, the show for my un my talk show, my TV show, Uncommon Conversations with Jaja. And I am going to have my special guest, Derek Davis, uh, Coach Derek Davis. He is going to be my special guest. WHPR, make sure that you check me out. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know Jaja because you do. Don't be acting fake. That's the problem. We be acting real fake. Stop being fake. We got to learn to love on each other. We got to learn to accept each other for where they at and move forward. And whatever you don't like about them, pray about it. Don't talk about them. Help them. Okay. That's what we need to do. 
Stop hating on each other and start helping each other. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. Until next week, peace.